Hello, welcome to our Brighton Night at the Mag. Thanks for supporting our school. So, th this is the piece I chose. It's called Saint Stephen Early by Domenico Fetti. He was the first Christian martyr. He has a feather and two rocks and a book under his arm. That book is a Bible and it's almost like he's protecting it. And I think because his facial expression, he's deciding whether or not he should go ahead and believe in what he believes in and make a stand or just stand back and do nothing. What I saw when I first looked at this painting, my eyes were first drawn to the scene in the middle with the woman and the soldier. But then when I looked at the whole painting, I saw there was more to the scene. There was the woman seemed to be taking away from the man by the soldier. And then over here I saw which looks like servants um, looking astonished or scared by the scene in the middle. I especially liked the way the artist used contrast in the painting by making like the outsides darker and then putting like more of like a spotlight on the center of the painting. I think the artist wanted me to see the main scene and then expand my view to the rest of the painting. What I think is like maybe something happened between this man and the woman and it was something that the soldier see, seems, thinks, seems to think is wrong. And, um, and I think the woman doesn't understand, which is why she looks like astonished or surprised. The name of the painting, Cleopatra captured by the Roman soldiers after the death of Mark Antony. I chose this painting because when I came in this room during our tour here, I was immediately drawn to this painting. This piece that you are looking at right now is called The Prince Seller's Window by Walter Goodman. It was created over the course from 1838 to 1912. So when I first saw this piece, I noticed that the Prince Seller, he's in like a window, but then it's like taking a picture of him and it looks like he's in a picture. And then there's all the other pictures. He's holding a small sculpture and it looks like he has a bunch of like other uh, like knickknacks, so he's probably inspecting it to put it on sale. Um, but his eyes are looking away, so it looks like he's getting distracted by something, or he's longing to like be somewhere else instead of there. I also noticed that the light is shining right on his face. Like everything around him is dark, but then the light is right on him. So that makes it more like dramatic in the center. So maybe like to emphasize that his eyes are like looking away, or that he's older. I loved the depth of it because it like keeps going deeper. Yeah. This piece is The Wanderer by George Groves. His story was this man is escaping the explosion back there and he was a World War II veteran. He was a German soldier and he was trying to escape Hitler and the Nazis. This painting is showing how he's walking away from this explosion in the background, escaping all of the commotion and drama back there. For the negative space, he used the dark raven, and I can see the grass over here that he used. I think that he did a good job with shading, the use of shading to show the mood of the painting. And I think that the painting looks very dark, <clears throat> so I think Therefore, he's trying to say that the mood's very dark and sad. So this piece is called The Seven Yard by Christopher Days Ellis. The technique of a focal point was really used in this piece because there's a really big face, obviously. I personally thought it was a story about a girl who lives in a city that doesn't really have a lot of color. It's like, as you can see, there's not a lot of colors, mostly just black and white. And there's only a little bit of color in like the trees. So I really think I brought out like the girl's like face to kind of tell her story. And when I researched it, he actually painted the singer Beyonce. She was born in Texas, but she liked New York City, so she was the main center of this piece, very large in this. I also thought that it was sort of like 
kind of embracing like city because if you look into New York City, you see like all the graffiti and all like the street art. It really like shows the heart of the city and what the city's really about. This is um, Standing Angel by Jean Bourbet. It was made in 1926. It's actually a replica. The wings in the back might kind of like mean like if they were <clears throat> open, they would kind of mean a sort of sheltering, commanding or something. Um, that's probably what the sculptor wanted it to be. I kind of felt like it was kind of looming over me, probably because I'm short, but it just kind of felt like powerful. This statue, like if you look at it, you kind of look at it again and then you're like, maybe I should do things po more positively. Maybe to wonder what you did today or in the past month or year. See if you, see if you can change anything in the future. Try to repair something that you might have done. Um, yeah. The piece I'll be discussing with you guys today is called The Triumph of Judith. It was created by Francesco Solomena in 1702 and it took two full years to finish creating. When I first looked at it, I saw the head, of course, and then later my eyes went to the woman standing in the background holding up his head. Her name was Judith. She's who the painting is about. I thought she was showing feminine power and how you can stand up for what you believe in. She's holding up her fist to injustice, and she's not going to let anybody tell her what to do. The dog actually symbolizes innocence and hope. These people are so in awe of what she's done. There seems to be a real amount of hope that has come with this decision to murder Holofermes. I did some research on what actually happened here, or this old tale behind it, and originally it says that Judith had been called down to Holofermes, the king's chambers, because she, he was enticed by her beauty, and she was already pretty mad at him because she, he had killed her dad, and um, he was about to destroy her hometown, and so she murdered him, and now she's showing her hometown what she's done. Yeah. This piece is by Mars Den Harley, and it's the waterfall of Morse Pond. This piece shows a really resilient climate, and because it shows that it's in either fall or going into a winter setting, in the back it shows more of a life giving um, setting and in the front you can see that there's trees falling down and all this stuff that's happening like the erosion of rock and the negative space is more influential in the front than in the back. Also you can see that it kind of I, I guess you'd say passes from the back to the front really well by showing a contrast of light and dark. And the leaves from the browns to greens show like put your eye to the middle of the piece at the waterfall. This piece kind of popped out to my eye when I saw it. There are some really good details. You can see that in the bottom there is a sprinkle of orange which could show the pattern of leaves under the water and through the water. It drew my eye in also because I love nature and it kind of showed me a different side of painting because I don't usually like to paint but I do really like art. Nonfiction by Robert Guathme. My interpretation of this painting is the barbed wire represents segregation and unfair treatment. The person playing the banjo could symbolize hope and happiness in the near future. I thought that the man in the colors represented hope. This relates to not seeing crises as insurmountable problems because it demonstrates the ability to relax and know that the boys will eventually get through their problems. This also demonstrates the ability to maintain a hopeful outlook because the colors and the shapes that are on the man's clothing show positivity. I think the artist is showing that it's never too late to give up on hope even though the boys are faced with insurmountable problems like racism or segregation. I feel as though the artist is trying to prove and show that sharecropping was a terrible time and wants everyone to know that it did happen. Maybe that's why the painting is called nonfiction. For the past few weeks, I've been studying this painting and developing my own interpretation of it. What I focus on in this painting is the girl wearing fancy clothes. She's got a nice white dress with a blue sash and next to her is a hat that matches her outfit. She's holding a bird in her hand, which I assume is her pet since it's on a leash. Also, she's standing outside on a dirt road with hills on either side. The artist uses texture to convey the material of the girl's dress so you can tell it is silk or satin. 
This shows that she comes from a higher class family. I think the museum put these three works next to each other because they are all part of the same family, in which case it is clear that this girl is part of a wealthy family. However, you would expect a wealthy girl like this to be inside in some fancy room like her mother and father. Instead, she's outside where her expensive white clothes could get dirty. But this girl is not worried about getting her clothes dirty or the fact that her hat is on the ground. Instead, she is just relaxed and enjoying being in nature, which is why I think the artist is telling us that this girl is outside because she's trying to escape from something at home. I think there is something about this girl's home life that she finds stressful and she feels the need to go outside and spend some time alone in fresh air to recharge. She chooses to be outside because outside she can be free from anyone telling her what to do or how to act. The artist also uses perspective to show the length of the road behind her. This could symbolize any difficulty she's had turning herself away from the life everyone expects her to live and doing what's best for her, which she knows is spending some time alone in nature. Thank you all for coming. Enjoy your evening.